Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Enjoying this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway. The people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza to podcasters. Hey guys, it's the awesome chat. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitters. And uh, this is the show where we're finding everybody awesome, Pittsburgh and beyond, doing cool things in the startup industry and in technology and social media, bringing them here and uh, and just having a conversation and let you get to know these people, what they're doing, and some cool things coming up uh, that you, can, you should be uh, certainly be keeping an eye out for. Uh, of course, you can check out this and so many other conversations. We talked with guys at the Coin Up Hall of Fame up to uh, yeah, Jagoff was our first uh, our first uh, uh, interview, of course, all over at awesomecast.net. And you can look for the awesome cast. Uh, I'm sorry, the awesome chat. That's the other show, is the awesome cast. The awesome chat is on iTunes, uh, Stitcher, Spreaker, and as well as on the YouTube channel for the awesome cast itself. So, uh, this this uh, this week, uh, you know, I, you, we follow Alpha Lab a lot. Um, I attended my, my second demo day, and we talked about this company and so many more that caught my attention a few weeks ago on awesome cast so check out the first week of june there uh at awesomecast.net and uh you can see a little bit more conversation about that event and what happened uh but uh we got the line up and i'm really pleased to to welcome on the show uh we have of course uh noam eisen and uh dalton banks co-founders of hacksbox well i guess co-founders of basin labs correct hacksbox is your product right yeah Banson Labs. b-a-n-s-e-n yes uh, last company hacksbox is the product awesome so first of all what is hacksbox it's uh, so this is the this is initially a video game uh sort of peripheral uh but you're doing something really special with that what, what is this hacksbox that that that, that uh, we're hearing about great so the basic idea is hacksbox lets you plug in all sorts of input devices whatever you want to plug in and turns it into a game controller so it lets you instead of playing xbox with a standard Xbox controller or PlayStation or the PlayStation controller, you could hook up foot pedals or gesture controls or head controls, all sorts of things. And the main thing we're focusing right now is on making gaming accessible to people who don't have the manual dexterity, like people with disabilities who can't use regular game controllers. Awesome, awesome. So how did you guys come across uh, uh, this concept? Like, where, where, How did you get to, uh, why video games, for, first of all? Well, there's a bit of a long story there. I actually grew up with a with a brother with a physical disability, and so video games with him was definitely some of the inspiration behind it. Um, we actually started this as a class project when we were both at UPenn. We both did robotics there just before heading here for Alpha Lab. Um, and we were actually originally starting, you know, thinking about making a custom controller for someone with a disability, and then started to realize if you could open up gaming to any sort of controllers, you're going to be able to cover a lot a lot broader range of disabilities than if you just have one special custom controller. Mm. Um, so we started, okay, instead of working on this um, you know, heavily customized controller, how about we make an adapter that lets you mix and match any sort of input device, uh, just kind of a universal adapter for gaming, um, and just kind of ran with that. And that's an interesting concept. So, 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 and as we saw, if you're on the video version, got some pictures here. So basically, it's a box that 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 plugs into your device. In the in the case you guys were showing off, was a GameCube here, right? Uh, at, at demo day, and here's a picture of that. If you guys are on video with us, and it looks like uh, I don't know what are those serial ports or like, like to me they look like kind of a PS2 port at first glance. Um, you know, what was there kind of an interesting mapping technique that needed to happen in that? Yeah. So the the ports themselves you can ignore because that's a prototype and it's our own proprietary protocol. It'll oh, be certainly. improved in uh, release versions. Um, inside the box, we have uh, our own software that, that, that and, and circuitry that makes it possible to take inputs from all sorts of devices, whether it's joysticks like the flight joystick we had just there for a demo, uh, wheelchair joysticks that you'd use for a powered wheelchair, sip and pop, like Dalton was saying, all sorts of different input devices, and take those and map them as output um, as if they're a standard game controller. So you say this joystick, you know, flight joystick or wheelchair joystick corresponds to the thumb joystick and, and various buttons like that. Certainly, certainly. So 
um, so you came to this, uh, and it looks like you're you're looking for more than gaming access for this. Uh, is that correct? Yeah, we're starting with gaming. So gaming is an awesome platform where, um, like Steve Spawn from Able Gamer said when he introduced us, it lets people who don't have access to certain experiences experience these things through a virtual world mm-hmm. interactively. It's something that you can do on an equal footing with friends and family and peers, um, even if you don't have the manual dexterity um, to play video games using a standard console. So we're starting with gaming. Um, we think it's an awesome way that we can uh, open new opportunities for people, and we plan to expand it from there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, tell me a little bit about this because uh, able game. You know, we do we do some video game uh, uh, kind of blog stuff around here, and uh, able gamers was kind of a new thing for me. It was it was cool to see that this was a concept that's out there and a group that's out there doing really cool things. Uh, tell me about that connection with, uh, with with able gamers. What what is able gamers first of all? Yeah, so able gamers is an international charity that focuses on opening up gaming to people with disabilities. So they actually do a lot of advocacy work trying to. Um, get developers to incorporate more accessibility features into their games. Um, they do a lot of kind of one-on-one consulting with people with disabilities and setting them up with custom gaming setups um, tailored to their needs. Um, they go to a lot of gaming conventions and um, kind of raise awareness. So it's a, it's a neat group. We actually got in touch with them about a year ago when we did a project for Philly Tech Week. Um, they had this massive game of Tetris on the side of a skyscraper in Philly. And um, we partnered with Philly Tech Week to use Hoxbox to allow folks with spinal cord injuries to play their giant game of Tetris. And we, so we got, we got in touch with Able Gamers back then, um, just kind of telling them what we were up to and getting some, uh, you know, they helped us out with some social media buzz. And um, uh, once we moved out here for Alpha Labs, Steve Spawn, the, the COO of Able Gamers, um, is actually... Um, based in Pittsburgh, Able Gamers is out in DC. And uh, and so when we were here, we met up with them, talked more about Hoxbox. Um, they're really excited about it and um, looking to partner with them as we get ready for a Kickstarter launch in the fall. That's fine, because I, th- I, f- I feel like we had the the Tetris on the side of a building maybe as a, one of our, like this has been up on YouTube, right? Yeah, this was uh, in Philadelphia, the right. uh, Philly Tech event so they put tetris on the side of the sierra center um and we got to have a certain number of slots for people with physical disabilities to play nice. tetris using hack nice nice i think that's been yeah it's certainly been making the rounds uh, up bit there um awesome awesome so uh how's the process been of course uh you just you just got through demo day what was that experience like and kind of what you know what what did uh alpha lab kind of do for you guys to get to the next level from wherever you were so we're, you know, we both went to Penn for engineering. We're, we're two engineers out of school with an idea and a prototype and a vision for how to take it to people. And Alpha Lab takes, I mean, at all stages of, of beginning a company and a venture, and um, they offer all sorts of advising, mentorship, introductions with awesome people in Pittsburgh who know things you never thought you'd be able to learn just by talking to someone and um, a whole bunch of companies together in the same space, which is cool. You get to learn from each other. and um, Basically, I'm not sure what the right word is. (laughs) It's an accelerator, obviously, but, you know, take you under their wing as you get to the next stage of the company. So you asked about demo day. Um, it's it's cool. There's, I mean, a whole bunch of people, a whole presentation, and you know all the all the nervousness and excitement that comes with it. And uh, <laughs> it's nice to be able to give a good pitch and let people know what we're doing and and get it out there. Awesome. And of course, as I was showing, you had kind of uh, some demos out there in the lobby. Uh, what was uh, how how are people uh, reacting to that and, and getting some hands on? I know for me, I, I know I got to play a little bit of the uh, the joystick map and then the idea of the leap motion and and I put my hand out and I, I open my hand to throw a, a turtle shell or something. Um, I just kind of want to do that. 
<laughs> regardless. Uh, but uh, how, what other kind of reactions did you get from uh, from uh, uh, people actually getting to try this hands on? So people get it once they once they see how it works. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you're not if you're not familiar with the idea of accessible gaming or accessibility devices in general, or just you know hacking games and using the devices that you want to use instead of standard controllers, it's not at the top of your mind unless you're in that world. And so once people get their hands on it, you see the light bulb go off, and um, you know, then you're off to the races. What are all the things I could do with this? There's all sorts of things. And, um, we had some people come by who know people or have kids with physical disabilities who were interested in getting it. So we'll you know, obviously be in touch with them as we launch the Kickstarter campaign in the fall. Um, it, it's cool to see different reactions from different people with different backgrounds. Excellent, excellent. So, how does this uh, how does this work? You, you mentioned the mapping technology, and I think I was asking in there at the thing, like you know what work needs to be done if I'm a disabled user or somebody's helping me get this thing set up uh, you know when ideally obviously you guys are kind of earlier in development you got a Kickstarter coming up but let's say I get this thing uh, ideally and I want to play uh, Mario Kart you know let's say on, on the door of Wii or, 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 or something on a PlayStation or something like that um, you know what, what, what process is there or is it going to be uh, kind of ready to go in a certain aspect, depending on the device I'm using. Like, what's what's kind of the kind of general plan there? Yeah, so um, I mean, it's a you know an evolved question. It depends a lot on the person, but mm -hmm. there's a whole range of accessibility devices that people are already using for accessing their computer, and a lot of these are you know USB devices. Right. And um, well, by supporting USB inputs, by supporting ability switches, which are just you know, there's all these sorts of oversized buttons and so forth that people can use. Um, there is, you know, that, that covers a huge majority of um, accessibility devices that people already use. And so, you know, you can just plug these in and then we have a configuration software that comes up and you just, um, you know, you can use the devices themselves to um, set up, okay, I want, you know, I want this device to control the joystick, I want this um, device to control the A button, this one the B button and so forth. Um, so depending on your level of disability, it might require you know a caretaker to actually just plug everything in. Um, but once everything's plugged in, you're good to go. And we, um, you know, one thing one thing that's exciting too about um, starting to get more people using this is you know there's there's certain configurations that are going to work best for certain games. And once people start to figure out configurations that work really well with certain devices. And you can Start sharing those profiles so you can just you know, download a profile that works really well for Call of Duty for someone with you know one good hand, for instance, um, and then you know you start to develop a community around it. It is kind of interesting, isn't it? Because you got to think, you know, say there's a guy with uh, with one hand that wants to play Call of Duty. Uh, you know, the thing I think of with with uh, I know some people with like you know uh, cerebral palsy and and um, you know uh, you know interesting kind of growth things that have happened with it, with their hands and the development and, and sometimes I think the first thing I think about is that dexterity right especially playing Call of Duty you kind of have to be quick with things um, so so this is going to range depending on what it is what the controller is um is is there a big limit to playing something a little more difficult using all the buttons like uh, a call of duty versus you know mario kart seems simple enough there's a couple buttons and i get to move my cart right 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 so the hackbox lets you plug in a range of accessibility devices or other devices mm -hmm. and use them in combination right so it's not just one joystick or one button um you can hook up a range of them so as long as you have the, the right number of inputs in ways that you can access them, you map them onto the controller and, and you're off to the races. Mm -hmm. um, we started with the simpler games because it's easy to demo. Like, like you saw at Demo Day, it's, you know, you're not setting up a whole, a whole setup for you know, the table at Demo Day and tearing it back down. So we've gone with simple games like Mario Kart. Um, but it's, that's what the system's for, right? That's what Hackbox is for. Right. And are we looking at, it looks like, you know, I'm seeing the breath controller. I'm seeing, uh, I, what is this thing on the end here? It's kind of like a, a tilt sensor or something, isn't it? It's a, yeah, it's a, we're calling it a wrist gimbal. That's the only one that we invented. Um, and oh. that was actually for a different project. We, 
for, for this purpose, we probably just ignore it, but it takes <laughs> your rotation. So, um, you know, outside, inside, and then the other direction, oh. pronation, supination. Uh, sorry, flexion, extension, pronation, supination of your wrist um, and converts that basically like a joystick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the, I mean, like, like Noam said, it's kind of a whole separate project, but there's a lot of potential usefulness for this in physical therapy and rehab as well. So just right. you know, take physical therapy motions and rehab equipment and using them as game controllers is a much more engaging way for patients to do physical therapy and improve. So. And it, it, you know, as far as like kind of the breath thing, kind of makes me think back to we did some stories on on an old project they used to do about uh, ALS accessibility and, and some of those kinds of things, and, and really things for them to still use computers. Um, and a lot of that is, it seems like the kind of thing that would be accessible with something like this. So, so are we looking at some of these people may already have these for other needs, and now we just have an interface to get that involved uh, 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 with video games, right? So it's not it's not it's not a lot of extra hardware on their side, right? Typically, right. So the, there's all these there's all these input devices that already exist out there. They just don't play well together, and they don't play with well with game systems. Okay. So, um, porting, you know, all these different devices, and by making it really easy to mix and match them, awesome. um, you know, it makes it so that you can like we're not in the you know input device business. We're just we're making them play nice, and we're making them useful. Games. You're kind of more in the compatibility facilitation business, right? Right. Right. Awesome. So you mentioned the kick. Yeah, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. More broadly, the, in, the insight we had about making games accessible is that you know that there's all sorts of people, all sorts of efforts that people have made to make you know disability focused games or rehab games, but you know the it's not the it's not the main focus of the major game industry. It takes so much effort to make a high quality game. Certainly. And so you get a lot of these games being pumped out for accessibility and so forth that are just really not that entertaining. Um, and even even beyond that, you know, it's not something that your friends are going to be playing. So we're just thinking, you know, instead of trying to make make a different game, stick with the games that everyone wants to play and just change how you're interacting with them. That's great. That's awesome. Uh, you guys mentioned the Kickstarter before. So what's the what's the plan for that? You said it's coming in fall. Uh, what what what's that next step that you're hoping to get to? Yeah. So we want to take it to everyone who wants it, right? So Kickstarter is a great way to do that. Um, get to through the campaign. Basically, you're you're selling the device. You're getting the the people to say yes, we want this. Absolutely, go produce it and give it to me. So mm -hmm. that's what the Kickstarter is for. Um, if you want it for yourself or for someone you know, you can pre-purchase it. Um, if you want it for, you know, if you want to want to see it come to life. At all levels, you know, contribute um, and, uh, and help it happen. Um, we're going to partner with some charities so you can um, give a hacks box to someone who needs it um, through Kickstarter, which is pretty cool. Um, so we're excited to be bringing that. We haven't set the date quite yet, but it'll be coming this fall. Awesome. If you do that, please let us know so we can uh, talk about it. Of course, we'll, we'll plug as many people as we can through our networks. Uh, definitely yeah, want to help out with that. I should mention we have a mailing list, too. You can contact us through our website, hacksbox.com, H-A-X-B-O-X, -X, mm -hmm. um, and get signed up, and we'll be giving updates and progress along the way so you can stay involved. Awesome. Go over there. Go check that out, especially if you're in this space, want to help out with this space. Uh, so you've been through the process. You're in the middle of a startup. Uh, do you have any advice, especially on the hardware side? Because that seems to be a big thing that's popping up here, especially with Alpha Lab gear. Uh, do you have any advice for somebody that has an idea like this that wants to really kind of execute uh, uh, their idea and make a reality, which you guys are on the verge of getting it really in a lot of hands here? Yeah, I mean, so the big thing is Often you'll come up with an idea and you'll be attached to the idea. The best thing to do is go out and talk to the people whose problem you think you're solving and make sure you're actually solving it. So that's what we did. We've gone out and talked to all sorts of people and we've become much more specific about the problems that we're solving, like we've been talking about. Um, and we have a product that addresses those. So building prototypes, that's a great way to do it. Um, Go out and meet the people who you're building this for, right? Because that's, that's why they're going to want it, because you're solving their need. Yeah, and the great thing with hardware is that it's just gotten it's gotten so much more 
efficient to prototype these things. And so, um, yeah, I think there's, there's really no substitute for when you have an idea you think is going to work to put together a mock-up that people can actually hold and interact with. So, um, I mean, there was some pretty involved engineering that went into the first prototype of the hacks box, but all said and done after we kind of conceived it, planned it out and executed, it was about a, um, about a six week project to getting our first working prototype. And, um, you know, something as soon as you have that box sitting on the table, you can plug these different things up, things in, and people are like, I've never seen someone playing a video game that way. You know, just it's it's a huge difference from when you're just bouncing the idea around. Awesome, awesome. Anything else you want to put out there about uh, uh, st- well, how startups in Pittsburgh? How 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 is that community? Uh, before I get to the closing stuff here, because um, I'm always interested to see that. I mean, I think uh, everybody's got a chip on their shoulder uh, comparing to guys like uh, San Francisco that have things really developed up. And uh, there was some a uh, really good pep talk, uh, definitely a demo day about uh, Pittsburgh is the place to be uh, is one of the places to be for for this kind of stuff. How can you attest to that? I think Pittsburgh is cool because people are much more laid back. It feels, um, you know, it's a healthy, a healthy competition. It's collaborative, supportive. Um, obviously, you're you're all out there to, to be the best you can be, and so you get to talk to people about problems they've had and learn from those. And um, I've, I haven't been out to Silicon Valley or anything, but from what I hear, it's it's much more community oriented with in a, in a real sense and like belonging and, and being supportive. Yeah, very which, yeah. It's been enjoyable. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, anything else you want to uh, plug any other uh, anecdotes, anything else from, from your time uh, putting this together uh, before I let you go here today? I know we're kind of on a time crunch uh, for this. So, uh, yeah. but... um, Ah, I think we'll be talking more as as we get closer to the Kickstarter. Um, definitely sign up for our mailing list. Get in touch with us. Let us know um, your interests and if you want to help out. We're always open to the people who are as excited about this as we are. So get in touch and we'll be here. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for do- uh, for for, uh, for for joining me here, uh, Noam and Iston. I'm sorry, Noam and Dalton. Sorry about that. Uh, with uh, Basin Labs, uh, hacksbox.com, h a x b o x dot com. Sign up for everything. Get the information and say we're going to keep an ear out and try to uh, relay anything that we hear as well. It's a, a great device, a great cause uh, to, to to get out there, and, and more people need to play. Video games are still therapeutic, aren't they? So. <laughs> Uh, it, 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 it's it's you know I mean we, we have wees in in in, in uh, elderly homes these days uh, so why not it's very therapeutic uh, so go check that out and and, and definitely uh, we'll be also put, piped this through our friends at insertcointobegin.com for some more video game news etc as recording this we just came off of E3 and boy am I tired uh, so a lot of stuff coming out of there as well um, anything anything exciting you guys from E3. Sorry. Anything exciting anything you guys what? from any exciting uh, anything yeah. exciting you from E3 yeah. this yeah. year? Yeah. You're gamers. Tend to be honest. Up with demo day, it's like a, a thought in the back of my mind. <laughs> Maybe next year. That's right. You're looking at virtual reality for this thing. I mean, that's definitely going to be one of the one of the next big questions. Like right now, um, there's a very concrete um, console game application where we can you know map these definitely. inputs out, but definitely. but. I mean, it's actually it's actually a really big issue for people with disabilities coming up because you know there's as you know as limited as there are there are options um, you know where people can access a computer access you know certain games um, using the switches they have and so forth. But once you know once you get more motion control and mm-hmm. you know you have things like the Kinect, actually the introduction of the Kinect and the Wii. If you look at some of these. Um, forums like able gamers like people are just getting you know really really worried about the future of interactivity and what it means for people with disabilities because right. you can't if you can't do motion control um you know you, you really can't interact with this whole world so that's actually going to be a really really important challenge to address both you know both for the hacks box but even just right. a bigger social issue because i've seen some stuff with the connect because you what it does is it maps you a lot of times to the character and it's expecting all your limbs, for instance. And right. if those aren't there, exactly. I mean, yep. 
All right, check them out, and uh, maybe we can tweet with you guys too about some video, some video game news as well as it comes out. Uh, so, uh, and of course, everything else, awesomecast.net. You can check us out for past interviews with the awesome chat and our weekly shows that we're doing clips all the time. Again, talking a lot of E3, a lot of uh, all the news with Google and, and the apples and the social social medias and all that kind of stuff, awesomecast.net. Uh, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and the Google Plus for all the news updates that we're finding through the week. And uh, please let us know, is there anything, anybody doing something, anybody out there doing awesome things that you want us to talk to on this show? Uh, please let us know on any of those social media platforms. And please subscribe to this and other shows. Uh, all the links over there, awesomecast.net. Thanks, guys, for joining us, Hacksbox.com. We'll see you guys next time. They've been our awesome audience. Or they've been our awesome guests. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. <laughs> This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.